Okay. So we have 12 people on this call. So thank you very much. Um, a lot of people were interested in learning more about public image. Uh, so welcome to the district's learn, uh, public image learning series. And today's the first session, but we're going to call it Public Image 101. Um, I'm just going to go down what we're going to be discussing or what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to do some introductions. Then we're going to talk about some updates. And then we're going to go through the agenda and then through the learning series. This is intended to be uh, short snippets of information so that you guys can at least walk away with at least one or two things. Um, by the end of today, I'm hoping that you guys are going to be able to at least pull an inventory of what your club has uh, when it comes to public image, but also be able to create a call to action, uh, whether it be for a social media post or a flyer or a website um, update. So let's go ahead and get started with our introductions. So first off, my name is Joshua Laguana. I am the president of the Rotary Club of Hickam Pearl Harbor here on Oahu, but I also serve as the assistant governor for Central Oahu. Uh, so that's Waihua Wailua, Pearl Harbor, Pearl Ridge, Hickam Pearl Harbor, and Mililani Sunrise. I also serve as the district's public image co-chair, um, and that's why I'm here um, doing this learning series. I am not alone on the public image team at the district level. Um, so on the screen is the... Hey guys, el arquitecto sabe, um... oh, I'm just going to ask whoever is speaking to mute yourself. I think that was you, Karen. Thank you very much. Um, but on the screen right now is our public image resource team. Um, it has the people's names. It has the clubs that they're on and their Instagram accounts. So. Um, you don't have to take a screenshot of it. Um, I already have these slides on our district public image resource page, which I will show you guys later. So uh, let's see. We're going to take a break here from the slides and let's see how many, if we have any dignitaries on here. Uh, so hello. Um, do we have any district governors? How about any um, past district governors or incoming district governors? Raise your hand if, because um, I can't see everyone's photo. Um, are there any area governors? I know I saw Arlene here. Hello, Arlene. Uh, she is West Oahu. Um, anyone else? Okay, guess not. So we're gonna get, we're gonna continue with this. Uh, so first things first. Let's take that out and share the screen again. Let's talk about some updates. So first off. Our events calendar. Thank you everyone for um, reading the email that I sent out last week and thank you for signing up for this learning series. So one of the first things I want to share with you guys is on our events calendar on our um, district website. Pull this one over here. We do have um, a calendar event for each of the series. So first off, how to find this is going to be on our home screen. And then under the news and updates, you can click on events calendar, or if you scroll down, you'll see it under the district calendar here. So when you click on one of these items, something that you may not know, some people say, hey, if it's not in my calendar, I'm for going to absolutely forget about it. Well, if you come in here and you um, click on the event, click on the date and time right here, and it's going to download um, a file that you it will allow you to save it into your calendar automatically. So just click on that. It downloads it right here, and then you can go ahead and add that to your calendar. And it's kind of like a set it and forget it. Okay, next update. is that we do have a district public image resource page. Does anyone here know how to access the district public image resource page? Don't all jump at once, please. Um, I'm gonna share with you guys what it is. It is rotaryd5000.org forward slash public image. Let's bring that site back up. So here, if we just go rotary d5000 forward slash public image, it will take us to this resource page. 
where it's going to have a lot of the information that I am discussing in today's session. One of the first things that I do want to share with you is the, the logos. We're going to be talking about logos today. We're going to be talking about the brand center. Uh, we're going to be talking about, um, I said that the slideshow or slide deck is in here. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're going to be able to see that right here. So today's is the February 27th Public Image Learning Series, Public Image 101. So you can go ahead and download that immediately from the district's website. And then there is also this one resource called the Public Image Checklist. Now this, again, is going to be back on our um, Public Image resource page. And then under our Public Image Hacks, there's, oh, I'm sorry, not that's not the one I lied. Let's go down, scroll down. I forgot where I put it. Public image checklist. Oh. Well, I forgot where I put it. So excuse me for that. I'm going to add it over here, but it's going to be under files and it's going to look like a file like this. It's going to look something like this, where it's going to have a checklist of different tasks that you're going to want to do as public image chair. It also has a calendar of things that was recommended to do on a weekly or monthly basis, and it's also broken out by each of the avenues of service, so club, community, international youth, and um, vocational. This is downloadable, or it will be downloadable, on the district public image resource page. So let's get started. I, like I said, I'm going to have you guys out of here by 345. And so um, just if you can real quickly in the chat, can you please put the club that you are a part of? I see Derek from Wahiwa Wailua. Um, Bobby is from Hilo. Jody is from Mililani Sunrise. We have Tess from Kapolei Sunset, Jada, who is new and joining for Kapolei. We have Stephanie from Lahaina Sunrise, Alan from Kihei Wailea. We have Mark from Volcano, um, Karen also from uh, Kihei Wailea. We have Alan Kamimoto from My Club, Hickam Pearl Harbor. Uh, we also have Arlene from Kapolei. So welcome everyone um, to today. So today's agenda, we are going to be talking about the online resources that are available to you. Um, we are going to talk about what to take inventory when it comes to public image and your club. Then we're gonna be ta talking about how you can identify what your audience is, because this is all gonna be important when it comes to developing your message. And within that message, you're gonna be uh, learning how to define a call to action. We're gonna again, uh, sorry, develop that message we're going to look at your timeline as how to, when to send these things out or how to post or when to post them. And then making sure that you're using the right tools at the right time. So let's go ahead and get started with your online resources. First off, you have the Learning Center. How many people, by a show of hands, have accessed the Rotary Learning Center? OK. How many people have accessed the public relations page? You may not know exactly where that is, but in the um, slide deck, if you download it, you can click on these links and it'll take you to that. But I've already um, brought that up here. So let's go ahead and look at that first. So we have the learning uh, center here. And when you're looking at this, what you want to do is make sure that you're pulling up the public image um, topic. If you click on view over here, it's going to take you to the available courses. Um, and you can see that I've enrolled in a lot of them already. Um, but it tells you how long each of those sessions are. I'm not here to regurgitate that information, but these are great resources for you. Also on the rotary.org website, is a page, if you go under learning and reference and then learn by topic, 
and you select public relations, it's going to take you to this page where it talks about public relations and what is your role um, and the relationship between your uh, public image person and the club and then the, the public. Um, it's a really good resource to talk about um, just what the expectations are and where to get started if you don't know. Make sure you sign up. All right. The next thing is the brand center. The brand center is where you're going to be able to go to download rotary compliant logos, create flyers, uh, create business cards, um, uh, programs like Enpolio um, or the areas of focus. Those are all going to be a part of that. So if you go to brand center, uh, or if you, uh, you search Brand Center in Rotary, it'll take you to this page. Uh, it has this great welcome uh, and allow introduction to the Rotary Brand Center, um, how to utilize it. Uh, you can also just go through it all and it talks about the brand, the things that you can download, templates that they have. Um, you'll also see the campaign of People of Action, which we are going to talk more about in next week's learning, uh, in this next week's session. But to access this stuff, we'll just go straight into the downloads here. We'll just click on view. It'll take you to um, areas of the download. So if you want to download things like images for people of action or Polio Plus or the individual causes, you're just going to click on those links and it'll take you to those resources. Very, very, very simple to use. I also created this on the, uh, I also created links to the, um, to these resources on the Rotary D5000 public image page. So if you put that in there, if you scroll down to the, um, on the right-hand side, you'll see logos, and then you'll see the links for the brand center here. Um, so feel free to utilize that. Any questions so far? Great, so we're gonna continue. Let's go in to what I want you guys to take away from here taking inventory. Each of you are in a Rotary Club, and each of you have a relationship with the other people in your club. You may be walking in or stepping into this role of public image, and this is your first year, uh, or you've been in this role for many years. Either way, it's really important that each new year you take inventory. But what do you want to take inventory of? So ask yourself, does the club have a website? If so, what is it? Does your club have a Facebook account, an Instagram account? Does it have a Twitter account? These are all very, very important. Newest thing right now is TikTok. If you um, know these, if you if you know these, write them down. If you do not know them, ask around to see if it's there. Also, ask if you have a newsletter. Is that newsletter coming from Club Runner? Is that newsletter just being emailed by one person? If so, who's doing it? And then the last thing is, does your club have a calendar? Is the calendar on Club Runner? Is the calendar um, a Google calendar? Take inventory of each of these things. Next thing is you're going to want to ask, does your club have a logo? Um, does that lo is that logo compliant? Does your club use the MOE? Uh, extra point right here. Who knows what MOE stands for? Anyone? Put it in the chat if you guys know. MOE stands for Mark of Excellence. If we look over here on the screen, it's the rotary wheel. It says Rotary International. Um, it's That is the mark of excellence. Uh, if it doesn't have the Rotary International in the middle, then it's just a simplified version. Okay, next thing to ask for inventory is, does your club have a simplified version? Uh, does your club you know the Rotary color palette? If you don't have any of these things, or if you don't think that they're compliant, go to the Rotary Brand Center. And these are all things that you can download from there. Let's continue. The next thing, who is your con club contact person information or info? So when it says, hey, contact the club for more information, 
Is it an individual? Is it a group email address? And if so, what is it? Is it a phone number? Who, who gets that phone call if someone calls? Or if it's a text message, who's responding? Next thing to ask yourself about inventory is, are there any handouts? Are there any flyers? The reason why that's important is you want to make sure that it is current. Is your club location on that flyer? If so, what does it say? Where is it at? If it's not up to date, get rid of it. Next thing is banners. Does your club have banners? Why is this important? Mainly because if you're out at an activity or if you're having an event or a meeting, you want to make sure that your banners are up so people recognize it. The one thing about a public image is that it's important that it's consistent, that it's not just oh, only at meetings we have this one banner. You have it at your service projects. Have it at um, your social events. The next thing that we're going to ask you to look at is your club flags. So two types of club flags. You might have the big club flag that says your uh, club name on it with the big rotary and the mark of excellence, or it may be the small club flags that when you go to another um, club's meeting, you're doing a flag exchange. Do you guys have those? All of these items, once you do take an inventory of it, it's going to help you identify, well, do I have the right person's information when I say to contact the club? Do I, are they, am I pointing them to the right website? Am I also telling them to go to the right social media accounts? All of these are very, very important. All right, next. Now that we took our inventory, you need to understand or identify who your audience is. What, it's very simple. Just ask yourself, who are you talking to? Um, in the chat, can you just enter some of the PR, some of the audiences that would be for your club? Or unmute yourself and say it out loud. Who are you talking to? Anyone? Who am I talking to? Come on, Lee, tell me. Who are some of the people that are in the audience? Oh, you guys are getting very quiet. So let's- Family, friends, anybody who's interested in the Rotary? Thank you. Yes, family, friends. What else? Who else? Local businesses. Thank you, Bobby. Students. Great, Jada. Coworkers. Coworkers. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a list now. You're talking to your members. Don't forget your members. They are your audience. Um, Alan is saying community, other clubs, leaders in government, local residents. Yes, members, prospective members, volunteers youth, other organizations, sponsors. These are your audience members. What's important about knowing who your audience is, is what do you want them to do? Do you want them to attend a meeting? Do you want them to join Rotary? Do you want them to attend a service project? How about apply for a scholarship? Maybe you're talking to other club members and you want to, want to partner with that club. Or maybe you're asking them to donate money or services. So you know who you're talking to, what you want them to do. Those are the who's and the what's, but then you have the where and the why. The where and the why is going to be when you're um, selecting the event. It's going to be on this specific day, let's say March 5th. Um, or when is it, or where is it going to be at? It's going to be at a restaurant in upcountry Maui. Why am I doing it? Well, because I'm trying to have a uh, membership drive. So all of those things are very important, the who, what, where, when, and why. But of course, we're missing that last one, which is how. That is where we, we, we bring out the call to action. The call to action is a piece of content intended to induce a viewer reader or listener to perform a specific act, typically taking the form of an instruction or directive. That's your call to action. Maybe you're telling them, hey, sign up on my website. Here are some prime examples of call to actions that you would have in your message. Sign up on my website. Sign up at rotaryhph.org. RSVP on our Facebook event. Click the link in our bio. You see a lot of that on Instagram. Join us on Saturday. Subscribe to our newsletter. Or if you're on our website, 
download our calendar. These are all calls to actions. This is in your messaging, telling your audience member what to do so that they can be a part of the who, what, where, when, and why. Any questions so far? Okay, you guys are a quiet bunch. I like this. Okay, let's get into an example of what we're going to do. So first off, I have a flyer here. Campus beautification at Kalihi Elementary. It's Saturday, March 4th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Rotarians, friends, and volunteers all are all welcomed to strengthen the community with Kalihi Pride at our monthly campus beautification project. Uh, register online at rotaryhph.org. So first off, there's some little verbiage. I guess I should have had someone look at it before I put it up here, but it has all of these elements. The first is who. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to Rotarians, friends, volunteers. What am I asking them to do? Hey, or what? what, what is it? There's a campus beautification at Kalihi Elementary. Join us. Where is it going to be at? Kalihi Elementary. When is it? Saturday, March 8th. Why am I doing this? I'm doing it to build and strengthen the Kalihi um, community pride. And then how or what is my call to action? It's to register online at rotaryhph.org forward slash events. Any questions on how I design or how, looking at this messaging? Does anyone have any questions about that? Okay. Let's look at this. Tips for an effective message. One, keep it simple. Or as I say, put a little kiss in your message by keeping it simple, silly. The next is to have a clear call to action. So you're, you want to tell them, join us on Saturday. Go to this link and register. Uh, RSVP here. Click on the link. Make it clear. The next thing is that you want to find the right imagery to match your message. I mean, a a flyer or a post of just words is very limited. But when you have a photo of your members doing action, then it, it kind of enhances that message and gets more people to attract attracted to it. Next is make it shareable. So if you're putting this on your website, make sure that the link or the URL that, URL that you're using is very easy to, to, to send out and share to someone else. Um, if you're using social media, make sure that you're not using a private account so that it cannot be shared. If you are using social media, ensure that you're tagging others. One of the best practices that you as an individual club or you as an individual member can do is making sure that you're tagging other clubs that you're working with or tag other organizations that you're working with. And as a resource to all 53 clubs in Hawaii, it's very important that you tag the Hawaii Rotary um, social media accounts. Um, that's Hawaii Rotary on Instagram and Facebook or the Rotary D5000 on uh, Facebook. So make sure you're tagging others. And then the last thing is making sure that you're doing it timely. It's very, very important that you're not posting um, the event the morning of. You're not going to get much audience members to look at it and then be there. Be there. So what is timely? What I like to do is I like to work with the end in mind. So first is when is the event? I like to go backwards and say, okay, well, when will I send out my event reminder? Will it be through email? Will it be on social media? Work backwards. When do I need to get that RSVP done? When do I need to know? Or when does my um, community service um, planner or coordinator need to know how many people are attending? Or go before that is to know when your second and first announcements go out. So I like to say at least the week uh, before is sending out your first announcement or even your second announcement. If this is going to require people to register and or people to um, buy tickets, start it earlier, three weeks, four weeks ahead, but then making sure that you're doing the reminders of your second announcement, maybe your third announcement. But this is the public image section right here, from the announcement to the event, making sure that the word gets out there. It's also very important that you are working with the people that are planning the project or the event or the activity. Work with them. Have a, a meeting with them to develop a communication plan so that you and the coordinator or public image and the coordinator 
have an idea of who's responsible for what and when it's going to get out there. Now, any questions about that timeline? Okay. No, I don't I don't see any questions, so we're going to keep going. So let's recap the steps to creating an effective message. One is create that message. What is your message going to be? Remember, who, what is the who? What is the what? The where? The when? The why? And the how? Get this information down on a piece of paper. It does not have to look pretty. Then the next thing you want to do is design it. Make certain um, elements of your message stand out. You can utilize free um, designing uh, software such as Canva. Um, I love Canva and we're gonna be doing a, a learning series, our learning session on that in a couple of weeks, but you can upload your, your logos in there. You can make sure you can put your color palettes in here so that it's all consistent. And kind of it's like a set it and forget it because you can just keep moving things around on your, um, on, on your, your flyers. But using Canva allows you to put like an image behind, make the, the, making sure that your title sticks out, highlighting certain things. So after you create the message, you design it. The most important part is to seek feedback. You may be a team of one, but you want another set of eyes on there. Someone else that maybe the, the coordinator of the project or the event, have a look at it. Ask them for their feedback. If everything is good, then it's time to post it. Where are you going to post it? That's when you're going to go back to your inventory list. I'm going to put it on my website. I'm going to put it on my newsletter. I'm going to put it onto social media. And you're creating that communication plan in the schedule. When am I going to send it? Where, where is it going to go out? You're going to want to know your platforms, how often or when you're going to be sending out these messages, and making sure that the call to action is working. So if, if there is a link on there, test it out. Register at this link, click on that link, go through the registration process. Or if it's a phone number or an email address, test it out, making sure that the person receives it. Because all of these items are going to be important to, 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 to your audience. Because if they're going to use it and it doesn't work, they're probably just going to pass this uh, message even the next time they see one. Now, there are tools out there that will help you automate the process. So if you're using Facebook, there's this thing called the meta scheduler, and I'm going to bring that up. So here is the Rotary Club of Hickam Pearl Harbor's Facebook page. This is the, the page itself. If you click on meta, meta Business Suite, it takes you to this screen right here. It allows you to create a post. And with your post, if you have your accounts linked between Facebook and Instagram, like I do here, all you have to do is post this once. And you only have to write down your message once. You only have to add your photo up here once. And you also have the ability to schedule it. So you can say, I want to do it in the future. Or if you want to, because you already created your, um, your communication plan, just click on the planner here. And it will show you all of the, uh, it'll show you a calendar, uh, most likely by week, and you can go ahead and schedule things on here, whether it be a post, a story, a reel, or even an ad. But it takes you back to this screen. And it's, it's again, it's very simple as a set it and forget it. So using tools like this, or even using tools like Buffer, Zapier, Hootsuite. These are all um, tools that helps you automate it. Do not do things very last minute, meaning that, okay, I have an event this Saturday. Today is Monday. I'm going to create a flyer and send it out to everyone. That's, that's rushing yourself. Every good project is carefully planned out. What needs to happen? Who's going to be there? Who's going to start it? Who's going to end it? What does cleanup look like? Just involve your public image, involve yourselves to get in part, in a part of that process. 
And then in a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about Canva. And Canva, if you have the pro version, also has the ability to automate some of these um, things to go out um, on social media. Okay, so that is the, the end of today's session. It's to develop, again, a, a message with a clear call to action. You can use these steps over and over for every single activity you have, whether it be from meetings to uh, community service projects, even to fundraisers. Any questions out there? Lee, this is great unless you have too many words. Um, IG will only work if you post less than 2,200 words or so. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's go back to that first thing is keeping it simple. You don't want to write a story. Let's, let's be real. Uh, how many people look at the Facebook page? And if it says read more, how many people actually click on that? It's, okay, other than Lee. Okay, and Al, okay, maybe some people do, but most likely people are going to see, see, read more, and then, and then this whole thing comes out is like, are you going to read it all? I mean, if it's good content, if it's engaging, if it has the right imagery, yes, but most likely not. Making sure that your post is straight to the point and has a clear call to action. Any other questions? Okay. With regards to social media accounts, so you posted about TikTok and then Twitter and all the other ones. So, what is the what are the recommended accounts really that each club should supposed to have? Either all of the social media accounts that you posted, or just a combination of those? I think it's 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 any combination. You have to look at the audience. So there are definitely different types of audiences that use different platforms. Um, you may see uh, an audience between the ages of 20 and, four, uh, 20 and 70 using Facebook. You may see an audience of people between the ages of 15 and 40 using Instagram. You may see an audience of 6 through 30 using TikTok. So when you're identifying your audience, you're going to have to utilize that platform. Now, it's not something that, hey, we're going to create a TikTok account and we're going to go ahead and start posting things. That's great when you have that drive and you are willing to post. But what happens when you're done with it? That account just stays there. And that's a very common issue with, with a lot of clubs. You may see um, some clubs that have, hey, Rotary Club of Milani Sunrise, Milani Sunrise Rotary, RC Milani Sunrise three different Milani Sunrise accounts, what happened? So it's very important that you do create some type of um, continuity plan in the event that you no longer want to use it or you don't want to um, lead that charge anymore. Um, here in Hawaii, I will say that more, there are a lot of active Rotarians um, on Facebook. There has been a huge uh, transfer to Instagram um, the, in one of my first emails that I sent out a couple of weeks, we had 9,000% increase on, on engagement on Instagram. Um, Facebook, we're still around the 300% increase over a um, month over month. Uh, so I, I would probably just look at who you're, who you're gearing it towards. Um, I do know that if you are looking to get people in your youth programs, definitely use Instagram. Um, more importantly, use reels, use videos. Um, but both those test very good questions. We're going to be talking about Facebook. We're going to be talking about social media. We're going to be talking about um, Instagram. I believe that's in week four and week five. So stay tuned for that. Any other questions? We have nine more minutes left. Um, I, I thank you guys for um, continuing it on here. Um, we're going to uh, finish this up now uh, just to give you guys um, updates on the training schedule. So next week is capturing your club's people of action. Next week, we're going to have um, videos, examples on how to accurately capture people of action. 
These are not the photos that people are posing and smiling and shakaing. These are people actually working. And the important of that is Rotary International spends a lot of money to develop a campaign that shows that Rotary is a people of action, not a people of that pose and smile. Um, the week after that, we're going to do brand compliance. Um, March 20th, we're doing leveraging Club Runner to build an engaging club website. So majority of the clubs in Hawaii use Club Runner or have access to a Club Runner, and we're going to go into details on how to develop a website. March 27th, we're going to do social media one on one. We're going to do the basics of how to, uh, what's the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group? What is a personal account? What is a business account? How to post? Um, and what are the different platforms? I will also provide statistics um, for the audiences. So, Tess, you may want to um, be on the lookout for that one. April 3rd, we're going to be moving into April, is going to be Social Media 201, and we're going to talk about Facebook and my club, how to develop a page for your club on Facebook, whether it be a page or group. And then we're going to do Social Media 202, which we're going to again do that for Instagram. Those are the two primary accounts um, that Hawaii Rotary uses, so we're just going to continue and focus on those two platforms. April 17th, uh, we're going to be going into Canva and how you can create a positive uh, create brand positive assets. I'm also going to be uh, sharing some templates with you guys so that you guys can go ahead, add your own logos and mock it up yourselves. And this is Canva is free to use. So I highly recommend if you're not familiar with it, or if you are familiar with it, come. Um, but please note that the classes with an asterisk, they are going to be limited to the amount of people that can attend, um, because we are going to go uh, more one on one looking at individual clubs, asking or answering specific questions. And then we are going to wrap the series up with the effectiveness of media release. We're going to be bringing in people um, that have a great relationship with the news and how best to develop news releases, how to send them out, how to get um, people or the media to want to show your story. So that is the training schedule for the next eight weeks. Um, we also have a uh, April 30th calling all people of action, we are developing a, a commercial here in Hawaii. Um, it's going to be um, professionally produced, and we're asking for each club to provide videos and photos of people of action. Again, come next week and you'll learn more about it on how to um, capture that, but we're asking for people to submit their club activities, whether it be a service project, an event, or meeting. Um, also, the public image resource team, the people that I listed at the beginning of the uh, meeting, we are going to be coming out to your um, club events, um, of course, if you invite us. So if there's something that's happening, whether it be on Oahu, Kauai, Maui, Hawaii Island, please let us know. We would love to put that into our calendar so that we can come to your event. We can do some one-on-one -on -one training with your members and show them how to do uh, people of action. We can take some great videos and make sure that it gets into the um, commercial that we're um, going to roll out. And then we also want you to be brand compliant by June 30th. Visit uh, the district's public image resource page to make sure that you have the right logo, the right color palette, the right um, mark of excellence, the simplified version, all of those things, June 30th. If you don't know if your club is com brand compliant, email me and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one and we'll go through your website and all your other assets. So everything that we talked about in inventory, we'll do a checklist of those things. And then last but not least, please visit sharemyidea.org. This was designed and developed for our district. So if you have an idea for a fundraiser, you have an idea for a service project, you have an idea for a commercial, I, I ask you to please visit the site, fill out the online form. We're going to be creating a database of, of, of just these wonderful ideas. But also, um, I do want to ask you guys, if you have um, the ability or if you guys are interested in being a part of the social media um, campaign that we're going, going to be doing, we're looking for people um, to share their story, um, the story of why you joined Rotary, why you stay in Rotary, what is your most um, Im impactful um, service project that you've done. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be creating testimonials and we're going to be putting that on our social media accounts along with um, our website.
Um, if you are interested, please, please, please email me or email publicimage at rotaryd5000.org. It is 342. I am three minutes before. Are there any last things that people want to say or ask any questions? Well, thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you guys do join me next Monday at three o'clock, uh, where we'll talk about people of action. So until then, happy Aloha Monday, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>